Hello everyone, it's John Pushkar. I'm here again today with another episode to bring you some life-saving information about natural gas, fuels, and combustion equipment safety. Today's episode is all about that silent, deadly killer, carbon monoxide, CO. And again today, this comes to us as the result of a tragedy. In fact, this tragedy happened relatively recently. A few days ago, on April 19, 2021, a young lady, 17 years old, died from a carbon monoxide incident where she was using a power washer to do sanitizing work at a hog processing facility. This reminds us that it doesn't have to be big to kill you. It doesn't have to be a super sophisticated uh, piece of equipment that's got all kinds of fuel trains and burners. It could be something as simple as a vehicle. It could be an internal combustion engine attached to a power washer, or it could be something as innocent as a barbecue grill at home. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. And besides the dozens of people that die every year from carbon monoxide poisoning, hundreds a year are sickened and get exposed to carbon monoxide. I was involved in such an incident in 2016 at a middle school in Beaumont, Texas. In fact, I'm providing a link for the Chief Boiler Inspector Robbie Trout's report where I mentioned. In this incident, 179 folks were impacted. Many of them received hospital treatment. How did this occur? According to Mr. Trout's report, there was a boiler that was releasing carbon monoxide. It found its way to an air handler where the cover for where a filter was to be installed was missing. This provided a path on the negative pressure side of the fan for carbon monoxide to enter the air handler and then to be spread throughout the building. It was identified that there may have been a shortage of combustion air in the room. In the world of carbon monoxide poisoning, we need some type of source. We need a pathway or a way to spread that carbon monoxide to people wherever they exist. To prevent carbon monoxide poisoning, everybody knows about the need for detectors. Obviously, they're important. Everyone should have them. Even though they're not required in many commercial applications, I highly recommend that if you've got combustion equipment in the same room as air handlers, wherever that might be, you need to have CO detectors. There's many, many ways for that CO to backdraft or to end up in the room, and it's happened hundreds of times. No one should need convinced about the need for CO detectors everywhere they can be applied. But the root cause of all carbon monoxide poisoning is incomplete combustion. To understand incomplete combustion, you need to understand the combustion process, and you need to understand combustion basics. I'm going to show you a clip out of Module 1, one of the most important modules from my online school. In this clip, you'll understand the basics of combustion, how carbon monoxide is formed, and I'm going to give you some insights into observing flames and understanding by the look of a flame what might be going on, good or bad. So get ready to take some notes. There's lots and lots of good information I'm going to pass on here. Let's get some lessons learned that could save lives, keep people from being injured about incomplete combustion and carbon monoxide. Let's next take a look at the combustion process on a molecular level and see what actually happens when we combust fuels with air and we create other compounds. This is called a balanced chemical equation. What I'm showing you here is methane and you'll notice I, through many of these slides, I use the terms methane and natural gas interchangeably, so please forgive me. But I take methane, CH4, I react it with oxygen, and then I create carbon dioxide, water, and heat. 
We call this a balanced chemical equation because if you look at the atomic structure on the left hand side of the equal sign and the right hand side of the equal sign, you could see the same things are on both sides. There's one carbon on the left hand side, there ends up being one carbon on the right hand side. And likewise with the other uh, atoms that are there. We just rearrange them into different molecules. When we burn perfectly, we simply create the soda bubbles that are in pop, we create water, and we create heat. There's a term that we use for perfect combustion. We call this stoichiometric combustion, or on ratio, or stoic. You should know that we almost never in practice achieve perfect or stoichiometric combustion. It's a theoretical thing. When we sense things in a firebox, like combustibles or oxygen, we do it with, at some point, and we get really what's an average of things going on in the firebox that pass by that point in time. If we have rich combustion, where we have too much fuel, not enough air, we end up with a situation where we create many things other than carbon dioxide and water. First of all, we're likely to create some carbon dioxide, but the fact that there's too many carbons chasing too few oxygens means that some of those carbons don't complete the combustion process and they form carbon monoxide. When that happens, we have 27% of the fuel value that still was not released. We also then can create basically any other compound that can be created with carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. And you may be surprised at what some of those other compounds are. When we have incomplete combustion, we could be making alcohol, ammonia, formaldehyde. We can have black specks of, of dust-like material coming out of the stack, which is pure elemental carbon. And of course, we'll make plenty of carbon monoxide. So some of these things have some, some sort of an odor. Carbon monoxide is especially dangerous because it has no odor. There are times you may have experienced certain strange smells when you're in a building and maybe the heating system hasn't been working properly, or there's been flue gases in the space. You're not smelling the carbon monoxide. You're smelling some of these other surrogate indicators that have been released in the incomplete combustion process. Now what's especially dangerous about carbon monoxide is that it has approximately the same specific gravity as air. You understand that property now, so you know that it will tend to hang around in a breathing zone. It will tend to not move a whole lot because of uh, a density difference unless there's some, of course, temperature associated with it. It also has a cumulative effect, which makes it very dangerous. You could experience it for you know, three or four hours a day, and maybe the first day you're slurring your speech a little bit, maybe the second day you're stumbling around, and maybe the third day they find you laying on the ground somewhere in a corner, and they've got to get you to a hospital right away so you don't die. So again, incomplete combustion is something we're very, very mindful of. We're going to talk later in this module about how to observe flames and get an idea when things aren't going right. Uh, and again, be very mindful of someone who might be exhibiting these sorts of effects, uh, appearing possibly to be a little bit drunk, uh, slurring their speech. There may not be a lot of time to save one of these people. There's a real life story about a gentleman who ran a powerhouse who experienced this and folks let him drive home. He ended up almost having an accident on the turnpike. He got pulled over by a state trooper didn't understand that he was being motioned to roll the window down. Uh, they finally broke the window, called an ambulance, and, and got him treatment. But uh, this can be very bad. Move people to fresh air right away, monitor their condition, um, help them get treatment if it at all appears like uh, this is the condition. Neither Prussian Technical Services, Inc. or John R. Pushkar the presenter and author of this work warrant or represent expressly or by implication the correctness or accuracy of the content of the information presented. The user or viewer of this work accepts any legal liability or responsibility whatsoever for the consequences of its use, 
and misuse. Hopefully you found something here of value that you can pass on to friends or coworkers. If you can, please hit the like button and share this video. And I'd also like to invite you to the Prussian Technical Services Online School, where you'll find more than 20 modules that I've created from knowledge I've acquired over the past 40 years, traveling over 3 million miles and being in and out of more than 300 industrial plants in 12 different countries. So once again, thank you very much for being here. It's my mission to pass on important life-saving information. I'll be releasing one of these videos just about every week. And if you could subscribe in the link below, I'll make sure that you get first notice of every time a new video comes out. Once again, thank you and please have a safe day.